Greg in North Carolina writes to me, hey Paul, how do phono preamps all perform so differently if they are all supposed to adhere to the standardized RIAA equalization curve? Well, <laughs> okay, let's, 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 let's take this thing apart a little bit. First off, we probably haven't talked about this for a while. What is an RIAA curve? So I think it, that's the Recording Industry of America or s some, something or other, a long time ago. That was started in the RIAA, went back to like the 30s or so. All vinyl records, all modern vinyl records anyway, it's since for, you know, since the 30s and 40s are equalized. What does that mean? It means that in order to become a long play record, that's where LP came from, the, the, the letters LP, long play, what we do when we master and cut the disc, we boost the high frequencies up and we reduce the low frequencies. So we take the bass out and we bump up the treble, okay? And we do that by quite a lot, 20 dB. That's a lot, that's a factor of 10 on each side, okay? Boost it up, why do we do that? Bass frequencies have much bigger, their modulation swings are much bigger and take more room on, on the record. Remember, things spinning and you've got this little needle moving back and forth. Well, high frequencies, little tiny things, right? Bass frequencies, so if we can reduce those and increase these, then a couple of things happen. We come up with our long play records, and now we can put more stuff on the disc than we could have before. Plus, because the high frequencies are boosted, when we flip that around and lower down the high frequencies back to where they're normal, we cut noise out. And the bass, eh, just, it comes back and we equalize it. So that's what an RAA curve is. It makes this sort of curve like this, and then we flip it around when we play it back. And yes, all phono preamplifiers must adhere to the RAA curve, or it's going to sound weird, right? Once you have the RAA curve installed in your phono preamp, now it's down to a couple of things. How you did the curve, how you implemented it, and the vast majority of how a phono preamp sounds different is all in the electronics. We're working on a, a new phono preamplifier, and oh my gosh, the amount of work that goes into that. How much feedback? Is the RAAA curve, do we split it in half and do the top half first, and then the bottom half second? Do we do it passively? Do we do it actively? How much uh, I said feedback. I mean, do we use MOSFETs, JFETs, bipolars? All of that matters in these designs. All of it matters greatly. I've spent my entire 50-year career trying to figure out the best sounding way to make phono preamplifiers and great engineers like our Darren Meyer, Bob Stadther, uh, I mean, Mark Merrill, on and on and on, all the great people that have worked for us, Stan Warren, everybody that has, uh, over all these years that has been involved, we've all worked tirelessly trying to make it sound better, and we're still at it. So, sorry for the long-winded explanation, but that's, that's the story. All right, thanks for the question. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. <laughs>